Well, we've had an interesting and productive week. Uh, I've been working mostly on the, the cribbing on the logging railroad, and I've been trying to figure out this, this burning tool that I got off of Amazon for carving the insulation foam. And uh, the key here is work slow. It's a very, very slow tool. Boy, this makes an interesting aroma. I would call it more of a stink. Yes. That's a burning plastic. Ugh. Yeah. But uh, there's nothing quite like burning styrene. But it does get the job done. You certainly wouldn't want to try carving away very large sections with it. We've also both been working on making ties. Right. <laughs> the, for the logging railroad. And... Uh, breaking out some of the logging equipment. Right, that's fun. That's fun, just trying out the Shea here. And uh, we've actually got five logging engines, none of which have been run. So we're, <laughs> we're firing those up and having fun with that. So I've been working on this paper clock. Are you sure that's not a space station? <laughs> it looks like it should be, right? Something from Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that it's all folded paper, but that's going to be a clock? I guess so. That's what the instructions say. Oh. Atomic, no. <laughs> a working clock. It came out of France, as I recall. Something like that. Yeah, French kit. But there it is. Origami clock. That'll be fun to see when you get it done. Oh, yes. Let's hope it works. Uh, yeah. And as I said before, I've been working mostly on the cribbing for the logging railroad. Uh, we kind of put the main railroad on hold trying to get the logging railroad whipped into shape. Well, frankly, because it's in the way. Yes. And uh, part of the logging railroad is, is finished, except now I've got to tear into this and make some changes. The, the rail's too small. So I'm going to pull up that rail and put down new rail. Uh, most of the railroad, however, looks like this. So it's got a ways to go. But we're waiting for rail. We have ordered a bunch of things and we're waiting on that. So and in the meantime, we're working on other things. And speaking of other things, Steve brought by the sand house. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I've, I've put the, the engine shops over here sort of on hold while I'm working on the, the logging railroad. But Steve is building the Chama sand house to go along with the Chama coaling tower that I've been working on. And look how much he's gotten done. That is amazing. Oh, and it's just so beautiful. It looks great now standing next to the coaling tower. The whole section here is really looking neat. I love this, this place in Chama, New Mexico. And to see it here on the railroad is really, really cool. It's kind of hard to tell from the pictures how big this thing is. But when you see, you see it with Steve in frame, it's huge! It is, it's gigantic. It's, it's 120th scale, so it's actually quite large. I'm really looking forward to getting some track in. This will be the entire engine facility. Uh, there's going to be a turntable and a roundhouse and everything. But uh, the, I think really the focal point of the whole railroad is going to end up being this coaling tower and this sand house. It is beautiful. It just it shows wow. up so nice. And Steve has done a full interior. Yes, of course. Look at that. <laughs> the neat thing is he's, he's figured out how the whole place worked, and he's tried to model it in such a way that, that you can see what the function is. So the main part of the sand is stored outdoors, and then the crew brings it inside, and they shovel it into this stove where it's heated up, and that dries it out. And then the dry sand comes out through this, this drain and is drained off into buckets. And then the buckets are carried over to uh, an area where they're dumped into a lift system. Now Steve had no idea how this system worked or what it looked like, so, well, he just invented something. Well, that would work. I mean, we kind of know the functionality, but no idea what this looked like at all. But compressed air was used to blow this sand into the overhead tank. So that required an air compressor. Oh, are you sure that's just a, that looks real. <laughs> yeah, Steve Scratch built this out of uh, various bits and pieces, but it's all plastic and, and wood. And he, he Scratch built this air compressor because you have to have an air compressor to blow the sand up that pipe that you see that goes into the overhead tank. And then from there, the sand simply drained down into the sand domes on the locomotives. Now we showed this to Ed Dickens at the Union Pacific and he said there's an important detail left out. 
Oh, really? Yeah, he said crew would sleep in the warm sand here. Oh, well, who wouldn't? Because <laughs> it was nice, dry, warm sand, and so you'd see train crew guys just sound asleep on the floor of the sand house. And uh, we should model that. We should. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that just the most amazing oh, thing? Oh, it's wonderful. Anyway, I've been working on the cribbing for the logging railroad. That's been my big project this week. Now below the track here, I'm using log cribbing on a logging railroad. That would make sense. Yes. This is uh, what the cribbing looks like on a real railroad. You can see it's just sort of logs uh, stacked up. Uh, the corners are notched to hold the whole thing together, but it, it's just meant to hold back a hill. Right. And so that's what I'm trying to recreate here using both uh, uh, half-inch dowels and actual sticks off of the trees outside. Ah. So as is my uh, custom, I started by just sort of testing some things and building some little uh, structures here just to see how that was going to work. Well, that looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty good. Now, I wanted to use sticks for the cross pieces just so that the end grain would look correct. I didn't mind uh, having dowels everywhere else. But uh, I also had to go through the sticks once they were cut down to length and grade them by size because I can't mix up different size on the same level or it's not going to go together. It'll be all crooked. Now I'm using more of these half inch dowels that we've got so many of. Right. I think we've got like a hundred of these and they inadvertently got left outside for about a year. Oh dear. <laughs> They've been knocking around here for like 10 years. But that gave them the, the most wonderful patina. It looks real. Yeah, so we've been using this for telephone poles and just oh, yeah. all kinds of things. So I thought that would be great for the, the left to right sections of the, the cribbing, the front to back sections being the sticks. And I think that looks really good. I like it. So I thought, okay, there's, there's the prototype right there. Now I just need to figure out how to notch it. Oh dear. So I did, I, went through and marked all of that off. Now also in cutting these down to length, I, I used a different technique. I cut uh, from one side and then cut from the other side and then snap it off. Right. So that it looks more like a cut log uh, if you see the end of it. And I think that turned out quite nice. It's yes. just a slick little trick. Now I figured to cut the notches into the left to right dowels, it would be easier to work with those than the little short sticks using just this uh, drum sander on the Dremel. Yes. And that should just carve a nice neat little notch into the, the dowel and then I can put the sticks in there and that worked out really nice. It did. Uh, I ended up destroying three of the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> drum sanders and made a qu quite a bit of smoke in the shop doing it too because it, <laughs> it burns more than it cuts, but it gets the job done. Now the bottom uh, log, I also put a flat side. I took it over to the belt sander and put a flat section just for stability and then started going through and putting the notches. It's very important to uh, line these because it's, it's critical that these notches all line up. So I just put one in place and then cut them from both sides this way so that uh, uh, the intermediate logs would all just drop neatly into place and everything would just fit together. Just like Lincoln Logs. Yes, that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great classic old uh, kids toys. Anyway, it went together quite well. Uh, the key was just making sure the notches all lined up perfectly. So the bottom log has that unique design that it's just notches on one side and then flat on the bottom and then all of the intermediate uh, left to right logs are notched from both sides. And then of course the topmost log is only notched at the bottom. So this is actually at the topmost log, just setting everything in place to see if it's all gonna fit and line up and, and work. And it, it all lined up just fine. It looks great. Yeah, and then I uh, glued the whole thing together with super glue. Yes. CA because, uh, and using the, the medium thick which is my preference when working with wood and just glued that all together and uh, came out perfectly. Yes, it did. And then I came back with my uh, saw blade. I used the, you know, the razor saw. It's a technique that you showed me. Yes. And uh, just kind of score that and mar it up and add in some grain and some bark looking stuff and looks great. 
Now the cribbing above the track, I'm going to do this way with square beams instead of logs. I just like the look of that and I wanted to use both types of cribbing. And that's what a prototype would look like. And uh, it's so much easier to build. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the short sections can be much shorter and everything's just cut out of these little square pieces of uh, square dowel and cut down a bunch of uh, short pieces, cut down the long pieces, mark that off, uh, no need to notch it or do anything, just glue it together with again the medium thick super glue and it just it goes right straight together. Much, much simpler than, than the log cribbing. Right. And then uh, part way up I wanted to do a, a setback there so that there's this kind of shelf. I thought that that would add a, a good deal of visual interest, but it also makes it fit the existing scenery so much better. And I think that looks really neat to have that little shelf going through there. And you can see why it has to be there. Uh, because the scenery actually sets back right, right there and now uh, it fits perfectly. I'm setting this into those foam rocks you made. Right. <laughs> we're, everything we're doing up here we're doing out of lightweight materials to keep it uh, very lightweight and easy to lift. Now instead of using creosote, I'm using Danish wood oil. Yes, much safer. Much safer and it smells much nicer. Uh, you know, I've actually used actual creosote on models and it, no, no, not, ne no, never uh, again. Uh -uh. And I really like the, the look of the Danish wood oil, especially the dark walnut. Uh, you just can put uh, coat after coat on there and let it soak in and uh, pretty soon it looks pretty darn good. It does. It looks like creosote. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't stink. Right. <laughs> it actually has a very pleasant aroma. And uh, like I say, I usually like to put two or three coats on, but once it dries and soaks into the wood, it really looks nice. And then to uh, embellish that, I came back and did your trick again with the edge of the saw blade and just started gouging up and tearing off the corners and adding in wood grain and just uh, just kind of distressing everything. Right. And it looks much better that way. And I like to do that after it's been stained. It just, I don't know, I think that just looks much better. It does. And now we've got to deal with the space behind the cribbing. Here on the log cribbing there's a great big huge space there because the the uh, forward to back logs are so long that I had to carve away a whole big section of scenery. So there's a gigantic airspace back there and I really didn't want to fill that in. Again, we're trying to keep this whole thing very lightweight and putting a whole bunch of fill material back in there just doesn't seem like mm, a, Not what we're aiming for. No, want to keep it lightweight. So how to fill in between the cracks without just backfilling the whole thing. And uh, came up with the idea to seal off the back of these just with some cloth tape. Right. And then uh, add in the uh, fill material. And the fill material is your trick. Yes. Kitty litter. <laughs> the kitty litter. It works <laughs> wonders on a lot of things. Well, we, we bought this bag at Walmart. And as long as you stick to the natural clay, just baked clay, no, no clumping stuff, no scent stuff, because that'll cause it to change colors and all sorts of things. This is just 100% natural clay. It's cheap and you can just grab 30 pounds of it over at Walmart for practically nothing. Yeah, it works well for everything <laughs> but cat litter, really. <laughs> and we've been using it for ballast on the outside part of the railroad and doesn't that look great? I like it. So I took some cloth tape and I just, working, working from the back side of the cribbing, put uh, strips of cloth tape in here to keep the cat litter from just going straight through, and then tried to put that on in such a way that it seals up the cracks as tight as possible. If there's some little tiny openings, it isn't really going to hurt anything. But the goal was to close the back side off with this cloth tape. Uh, the kitty litter should stick to the cloth tape, which would be nice, but then it also needs to be reinforced with glue. So we just dumped cat litter in there and take a look. Yeah. Looks. It looks, sticks. Looks great. I also decided to put it in place with the super thin uh, CA super glue instead of using my usual white glue because I thought the white glue might just cause the tape to all come loose and it would all just fall apart. Right. So uh, I decided to use uh, cyanoacrylic, the super thin version, and then did the exact same thing for the upper cribbing. 
just uh, took that and sealed off the back side of it with electrical tape and once I had that completely filled in flipped the whole thing over and then holding it at something of an angle like a 45 degree angle dumped the kitty litter that way some of it does cascade down the front and stick to the horizontal surfaces and so on um, should make a, a much better look and, and just dump it in there and there it is once again it looks great and then I uh, used the the very thin super glue and I could even put little droplets of that where material was just kind of on the loose on top of these beams uh, because that's really a, an important part of the look now the shelf is made out of that uh, styrene insulation material and super glue would attack that so up here I did use dilute white glue but there, it isn't going to dissolve any tape up here because there isn't any tape right. up here. <laughs> so that worked just fine. So there's uh, dilute uh, white glue up here and then uh, super thin CA everywhere else to hold it all together. And once the glue dried, it was actually uh, a pretty solid little piece that I could carry around and take out to the railroad and install into the scenery without anything coming loose at all. And it looks great. I like it. It looks really real. Well, I went ahead and glued everything in place with the foam board adhesive here. Uh, that won't attack the foam board, and that's what we're using to hold all of the scenery together. And uh, we're ready now to lay some track and, and get back onto that as soon as the rail arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm really happy with this system. I think that looks great. Oh, I like it. And... Uh, I think once we get the rest of the scenery in and everything, I want to have uh, water leaking through here and a few more details like that. But I think this is just looking great. I'm, I'm thrilled with the logging rail. I am too. <laughs> well, if you haven't been over the channel, please pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe with the blue button. That blue button right there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. We're going to be messing with the logging engines. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>